Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Unearth Horticulture. Today I have a topic for you that will interest all horticulturists, no matter if you're an outdoor gardener or a houseplant collector, it is a very pertinent topic and that is how to propagate via cutting. We are going to go over a little bit of the science of how propagation by cutting works and then I'm going to talk about methodology and how you can be successful as a propagation grower. First things first, you need to understand the science behind the steps, the process of rooting by cutting. And the number one definition that I would say is important to understand is callus. Callus is the first step of rooting unrooted cuttings. And we are in my study because I wanted to whip out my handy dandy uh, plant propagation textbook. And we are going to hear what Hartman and Kester's Plant Propagation Principles and Practices has to say about callus. <laughs> All right, callus is an irregular mass of parenchyma cells in various stages of lignification that commonly develops at the basal end of a cutting placed under environmental conditions favorable for rooting. <laughs> that was a very long-winded definition and I'm gonna break it down for you. All right, so callus is an irregular mass of parenchyma cells. Parenchyma cells in biology, very basic definition, is undifferentiated and unorganized cells. So these are cells that are being created that don't have a purpose yet. They're not, um, they're not leaf cells, they're not flower cells, they're not root cells, they're just unorganized cells. Blob of cells is forming, all right? They're at various stages of lignification, so as they're forming, they're becoming lignified, which means they're turning to kind of a woody texture, non-living woody texture. So you've got this hard mass of cells that's forming. That's your callus is forming. It's at the basal end of your cutting. So where you made that wound, this is a wound response. Callus is a wound response. So it, it's triggered by a plant when you make a cut and it's forming there at the base of the cut where the wound is. And it occurs under environmental conditions that are favorable for rooting. So callus doesn't always form on a cutting. If you take a cutting and you use maybe a tool that's not sterilized, that has disease existing on the blades, or perhaps you're putting your cutting in unfavorable conditions that maybe are dry or they're, uh, they're too wet or too cold, then that cutting is not going to form a callus, it's just going to rot. So all of these factors have to do with, do with callus, and callus is the first step to rooting your unrooted cutting. So it has to form this blob, this mass of undifferentiated cells that are kind of woody, and they form at the base of where you took the cutting only if you are placing that cutting in favorable conditions. So let's talk about what those favorable conditions are, and I'm gonna show you a few examples of cuttings that I have recently rooted. There are three factors when it comes to rooting your cuttings, and really all horticulture. These, as a grower, are what you are thinking about when you're controlling the environment for your plants. Light, temperature, and moisture. Let's talk about light first. We are here in front of my grow light. This is where I propagate my house plants. And you can go to both extremes with light. If you have no light, then your cutting is not going to be able to have the energy to produce callus and in turn new roots. So no light is no good. On the flip side, if you have too much light, you could risk sun scorch of your leaves or that cutting can become dehydrated from that increase in, in temperature and the cutting and the leaf temperature and dehydration can occur before you actually are able to get that cutting to form roots. So you wanna find a happy balance of light levels. So east window sills or back away from a south or west exposure window, or in this case, using a grow light. Those are all great ways to encourage rooting of cuttings via light. The second factor is temperature. And temperature really has to do with the speed at which your plant Process, goes through the rooting process. So if you keep it way too cold, like 60 degrees and under, you risk the plant, the, the plant slowing down so much that it rots before it's capable of forming those roots. And on the flip side, similar to the lighting 
factor. If you have too high a temperature, like 80 degrees plus, you risk the plant becoming dehydrated before it can form those roots. So to give it the best opportunity for rooting, you want to keep the temperature between 65 and 75 degrees. So ambient temperature, that's, that's the goal. The last factor is kind of a dual faceted factor, moisture. So first let's talk about the moisture that is uh, you, the base of your cutting is exposed to. So whether you're rooting in potting mix or in water, and we're going to talk about those methods in a second here. If you're rooting, you need to make sure that, that the base part, the basal part of your cutting, the wounded part, is exposed to moisture. If it's not exposed to moisture, the area where you're hoping callus and roots are going to form, if, it, if that isn't exposed to moisture, they're not going to be present because moisture is what triggers rooting. It must be there. If you have dry conditions, roots will not form. So make sure that you have a balance of, of moisture there. The second facet is humidity. And humidity plays a big role in rooting unrooted cuttings because it controls how quickly your cutting dehydrates, how quickly those leaves lose the water that they're already holding. So if you have really dry conditions, especially in winter months in our interiors, those cuttings are gonna dehydrate faster. And again, you're losing your window of opportunity for roots to form. But if you pr produce humidity around your plants, so you have a humidifier nearby, you have it amongst other plants, you have a humidity tray, maybe you're misting it regularly throughout the day, that encourages water retention within your cutting and it lengthens that period of time, that chance that your cutting is going to root successfully. So moisture is extremely important. The most important thing you need to think about when you're rooting your cuttings. But all three of those factors are important in order to see that callus start to form and in turn that root system. So let's talk about the methods of rooting your cuttings. So we are going to talk about two methods of propagation, two common methods that you see around, and I'm going to kind of break down the pros and cons for you. First, we're going to talk about what you may have tried already, which is water propagation. And there are definitely pros and cons with this. The number one pro with water propagation is that you can see everything that's going on with your plant when it's happening. You don't have to actually remove the cutting to check out what's going on. You can just leave it in its little container and kind of watch what's happening. There are a few cons though. Number one, once those roots do form, they're in an anaerobic condition, a non-oxygen condition. So it's a little bit more difficult for those roots to form and you risk some, some decay, some disease issues by propagating in this method. Another thing is, is that it's a little bit on the slow side. Now this cutting has been in this vase for four months at least, and it is still not showing any signs of root development. It's got a little bit of a callus forming. So I know it's coming, it's just, it's just slower. So the speed is a little bit slower on the water propagation. And the other thing is, it's a little bit more risky to transition your plants from water into potting mix. You've got one extra step, one added step that you can risk losing your your rooted cutting in that process. So if you do choose to root in this way, I recommend two things. First of all, it lends itself better to different species of plants. So plants like philodendrons and pothos and monstera that already have root initials started on the cutting. So you've got those little bumps where, where the roots are gonna grow, grow continue to grow from. Uh, those lend themselves a little bit better to water propagation because all they need is that moisture exposure and then they're they're ready to go. They're going to start growing. The second thing is if you do get roots happening and you notice them start to grow, immediately transition it at that point from water into potting mix. Don't wait for the roots to wrap in the water uh, unless you just think it looks cool and it's kind of decorative. It's really important once you see those roots developing to move them to their new home, their, their permanent home. So that's water propagation, pros and cons. The second method, which is my preferred method and the industry's preferred method of propagation is rooting directly into potting mix, into the media you're going to be growing your plants in. And I have an example, the same plants that I 
actually I took the same time. I've been waiting very long to shoot this video, four months to be exact. Um, this is fernwood snake plant. This is fernwood snake plant. They came from the same, same plant. The only difference is, is I took that one leaf and I cut it into sections. I bundled them with a rubber band here and then I stuck them directly into moist potting mix. And this is the way to do it, folks. This is the way to propagate snake plants. Um, it's a little bit faster. I know for a fact this bundle is already rooted and I'm gonna take it out here in a second to show you those, those root initials. But I wanna talk about the pros and cons of rooting in potting mix. The con is unlike water propagation, when you uh, wanna check for roots, you actually have to pull these out or give them a little tug to see if you're feeling resistance like they're rooted. So that can risk damaging new roots when you do that back and forth um, just to check the roots. So that's kind of a con with this method. Another con is that it lends itself to algae, fungus gnats, that kind of thing. But there's a quick fix for that. Uh, go ahead and you can buy on Walmart or Amazon mosquito bits. Mosquito bits you can apply in the soil and it'll kill the larva in the soil so you don't have to deal with fungus gnats. But when you use this method, it's really important you start with moist soil and then you keep it moist. You keep it wet. Don't let it dry out or it will kind of hinder the process of rooting and try to avoid keeping it soggy, you know. So definitely one of the pros of this method is that it's in its permanent location. You literally take a cutting and you stick it directly into the potting mix. And once it starts to form roots, it can start stabilizing itself. It can do those appropriate uh, wet dry cycles. The, the gas exchange for the roots is healthier and it's just a little bit more well-rounded, better method of propagating by cutting. So I encourage you to give it a try. Maybe do a little experiment like I did with maybe a different type of plant. Maybe you wanna try doing it with philodendron versus a snake plant. Another thing I wanted to mention really quickly is propagating by species. So it's gonna determine, the species of plant is gonna determine best propagation methods. So it's something you're gonna to wanna to experiment with. I'm just giving you some basic facts about propagating to help you be a little bit more successful. Succulents and succulent strings in particular, these are plants that require a little bit different environment to root. I still like to root them in soil, but they actually like to callus, go through that callus process in dry conditions. So when you take a leaf from a succulent, make sure you let it callus and form that kind of dried off area wound response before you stick it in moisture to root it. That's just a pro tip to help you get your succulents rooted a little faster. All right, I am going to take this uh, snake plant bundle out of the pot so I can show you the, the root initials here. A little bit of callusing too. Kind of tap the soil off so you can see the roots a little bit more clearly. I'll give you an up close. But you can see on these that not all of the cuttings are rooted yet. And that has to do with the cutting size actually. So the fatter, thicker, larger leaves rooted first because they had more stored up energy in order to produce those roots, get them kicked off. So that's a factor you wanna think about when you're taking cuttings. Maybe having more leaves or more leaf area on your, on your cutting is going to help it root faster. Um, you'll notice that they're, they're not very far started and I risk knocking them off if I just stuff them back down into the soil. So this is the con of this method is you have to actually kind of repot it every time you stick it back in if you're checking roots and you see that there are roots developing. If you don't have roots yet, you can just jam it back in there. <laughs> but otherwise, it's important to kind of do this repotting process to protect those fragile new roots. There are two last topics that I wanted to touch on. First is sanitization. Before you do anything, it's important to start with clean tools. So any tools you're using, make sure you sanitize them either by dipping them in alcohol or, or flaming them can even be a good idea just to get them sterile because you don't wanna pass along any pathogens to your cuttings because that already automatically can prevent you from having success. Another thing you wanna make sure is sanitized is your 
pots. If you have previously used them, make sure that you have brushed them out with soap and water, you've cleaned them, and then even you might consider also spraying them with some alcohol to sterilize them. The second topic I wanted to bring up is rooting hormone. Now you might have seen at your local garden center or on Amazon, you can purchase rooting hormone, oxen, in a powder form or liquid form, and you just dip your cutting base into that oxen and that speeds up the process of rooting. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. This is where you come in. As a horticulturist, you need to just experiment with this stuff. You might not need the rooting hormone and you might need it. Just give it a go, try things out. I don't root with rooting hormone powder at all. It might take a little bit longer, but uh, it's a cost that I can save and it's not always necessary. All right, that's what I've got for you in this episode today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot about propagation growing by cutting. If you have any questions, as always, drop your, your questions and feedback in the comments below. And until next time, you've been watching Unearth Horticulture.